Francisco has brought back Jimmy Garoppolo. Steve Young, who knows a little something about being the quarterback in San Francisco, right? He weighed in on the situation there in the Mercury News. And I want you to see what Steve said. He said, I've got my fingers crossed. This is great. This is hairy stuff. That's what I would tell Trey. It doesn't matter. The job's a job. You've got to do it. If you don't do it, you have to pay the price. So there's so many things about that that I'm interested in. One of them is... What does hairy stuff mean? Like, I, that, is that a weird way to put it? What? I'm not even sure. Mike T, I guess I'd ask you a two-part question. One, do you think it's hairy stuff right now in San Francisco? And if, if so, then what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, I believe it is hairy, if I understand Steve correctly, which is they may have solved one problem, which is giving them great death behind Trey Lance, but they definitely created another Trey Lance has unbelievable talent. I think that's unmistakable. But he also has incredible lack of experience. He's thrown roughly 380 passes, Greeny, since high school, which is remarkably little. And when you think about how the quarterback is a developmental position, Aaron Rodgers basically played in seven games his first three years. Brett Favre failed in Atlanta. Trey Lance will hit bumps in the road. And veterans like Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Trent Williams are going to say at some point, hey, Kyle, like, we love Trey Lance in the future, but we can win right now. So I understand what Steve is saying. This could get really interesting really soon in San Francisco. Could get hairy. Hairy is the word that he's using. That's the <laughs> adjective we're using to describe it. Is it going to be hairy for the young quarterback in San Francisco? I don't think it's going to be that hairy because the 49ers players know that their offense can be more explosive. Maybe a little less efficient, but more explosive with Trey Lance, higher ceiling. So they'll be a little more patient with him. And keep this in mind, first-round picks, they play. I mean, it's an NFL truism. I had an unofficial count here. 16 first-round quarterbacks drafted between 2018 and 2021. All but one, Jordan Love, started at least a few games in their first year, and almost all of them were named the starter either week one, week four, week six, somewhere in that first year. So it's time for the guy to let go. 49ers know Jimmy G's only going to take them so far. We actually have a graphic for that, Cindy. Let's put it up, right? Because these are the quarterbacks who were taken in round one that didn't start basically most of the games as rookies. Jordan Love, well, he's playing behind. Uh, we all understand he's playing behind uh, the MVP. Okay, okay. Lamar Jackson didn't take over until midway through the season, but we, he, we all know that he took off like crazy. And then we'll see what winds up happening here with Trey Lance. But that, if the best argument, I guess, Sacho, that we can make is, well, young quarterbacks just get the ball. I don't know if that's a good argument. Are they doing this right in San Francisco? Well, uh, they are, but that's not the best argument. The best argument is we believe that Trey Lance is our future, and so we want to hamper our future even if he has a couple bad stretches. If you have a couple bad stretches as a rookie, or as a second year player, you play through it. Don't just say, put the, put the backup in, especially when you know this guy is the guy we're, that's going to lead our franchise for now and for years to come. And so you should not say, well, if he has a couple bad games, we got Jimmy G back there. No, you gave Trey Lance the keys, let him drive the car. Well, that's the complicated, I get it. And, but it's easier to do if Jimmy G's not there because sometimes you avoid the temptation to yourself uh, if he's sitting there. We'll see if that winds up going. It could be hairy. One way or the other, they could have shaved this problem off by not having Jimmy Garoppolo there. So we'll see how it goes. All right, as we continue, a protection problems in Dallas. Is their offense good enough to make a deep golf their season with Dallas in a 26-year Super Bowl drought? But Jerry Jones is hoping that some of the risks that he has taken will end that drought. Give a listen. No one would deny that I'm a risk taker. No one. I take risk, and I do it every day in my life. And so there's a proper time to take some risk. We have taken them, and we will take them. I hope that some of the risks that I take in the future will result in a change from where we've been, and that's not getting to the Super Bowl. But I do that every day in my life. He genuinely is so interesting. I mean, there's, not, you know, it's, there's something about... I don't even know what he's talking about. Me neither. Yeah. I don't even know what the question was, and I'm not sure I understand the answer, right. and yet I just wanted to hear more. That said, Mike T., I think I can use the words he used to phrase a question, which is, has he taken the right risks this year for this team to do what it hasn't in so long? No, and it's going to cost him a trip to get back to the Super Bowl. And specifically, there were two risks he didn't take. One was Amari Cooper at $20 million a year. That's a bargain in 2022 dollars. He's a frontline number one wide receiver at $20 million a year. He will play well for the Cleveland Browns this year. 
And boy, would the Cowboys just be, what a great fit right now. They're desperate for another guy. He's ideal. He's been there. And it's shocking that they didn't keep him at $20 million. And then the other risk, Lyle Collins, $7 million a year, goes to the Cincinnati Bengals. They knew that Tyron Smith has had massive durability issues. Now, to their credit, they did draft Tyler Smith in the first round. But think about today, Greedy, if they had both Tyler Smith and Lael Collins. So this is a team that has taken risks, as Jerry Jones told us. But this year, they didn't take the right ones, and it's cost them a frontline wide receiver and a frontline right tackle. Uh, and, and so I want to talk about what might be at stake for this team early in the season. And if we can, Cindy, let's put up their first six games. Because Jeremy Fowler, we, we talk a lot about the coach's situation there, right? And how's just how stable is Mike McCarthy? Well, look at that early season schedule. Tampa and Cincinnati is brutal. Then Giants, Commanders, in theory, they should win those. But then they got the Super Bowl champs, the Rams. And then they go to the Eagles, which is expected to be their primary competition. If they come out of that two and four, which they easily could, and one of the losses is against the Eagles, so they are falling behind in the division. Where are we going to be in the Mike McCarthy conversation then? Yeah, Green, it, the heat would intensify on Mike McCarthy. There is no doubt on that. Now, when I talk to the Cowboys, they tell me we're all in on Mike McCarthy. We're prepared to be patient with Mike McCarthy. But the outside noise would be incredible at that point, especially if they fall to 2-4, and 0-3, oh whatever it is, with the Philadelphia Eagles. They have an easier schedule. They're coming on. They might have even a better roster right now. The Eagles have a startlingly easy schedule to start the season, and the Cowboys have a very difficult one to start the season. So, Sacho, I mean, you know that situation. You know them well. You grew up there, all the rest of that. Like, what's that going to sound like if the Cowboys, we get to the middle of October and they're in trouble? Well, it's going to be tough. I mean, look at the three of the first five games. Talk about the Buccaneers. Talk about the Bengals in the Super Bowl, the Rams in the Super Bowl. If you struggle early and Tyler Smith at left tackle struggles early, there's going to be a lot of questions and concerns. There, there are already questions and concerns in Dallas, specifically with the offense. Who's going to be the number two receiver? Uh, will Torbert step up? It could get ugly in Dallas early, specifically with the early season schedule. You talk, oh, back season, I get it. We'll fi finish it strong. It doesn't matter if you don't if you don't start strong. I think that Eagles game, uh, circle that game at the bottom of your screen there, at the Cowboys at Eagles. Because the Eagles schedule, early season schedule, we never know how these things are going to play out. But the Cowboys could easily be 2-3 and three going into that game. The Eagles should be better than that. If Philly wins that game at home, I could see this thing getting loud. So, all kidding. Well, let me go to Tannenbaum quickly on this. Do you see a scenario where if they're 2-4 and four coming out of that game and they lose to the Eagles, that we could see a coaching change that early in a season? I don't think so, Greeny. For all the risks that Jerry Jones takes, he's actually pretty conservative at the head coaching analysis in terms of when he pulls the trigger or how long Jason Garrett, Wade Phillips. There's been a number of coaches over the years that there was a lot of speculation that he'd make a move sooner. So I think you're right. I think Philadelphia should get off to a better start given their schedules and not having Michael Gallup amongst others for the Cowboys. But I just don't think Jerry Jones pulls the trigger that soon in this season. Yeah, I mean, and let's hope. Go ahead, Jeremy. Quick thought. Well, no, to Mike's point, they're risk averse, even with the roster, too. Like, this is not a reactionary splash move team anymore. They draft and develop players. And you know what? I kind of like it. They've won double digit win seasons in four of the last eight years. Yeah. Pretty good. No, I, I, look, I, I, Jerry Jones has gotten a lot more right than he's gotten wrong yeah. in recent years. But it hasn't added up to what he really wants and their fans really want. Let's see where it goes early in the season. Again, their early season schedule is brutal. As we continue, Stefan Diggs, bold statements about his quarterback, Josh Allen. Is his the 